Next we're going to talk about is the negative exponent rule. The negative exponent rule, there's actually uh, two different ways that we can present the negative exponent rule. And uh, we're going to see if we can't look at both of them. Uh, this first method that I'm going to show you, uh, I basically use when this happens. When the negative exponent applies to only part of the expression. So if you look at this, we have 5xy to the negative 2 power. Okay, The denominator right now is 1 because there wasn't a current denominator written. And uh, what we do is uh, our base is still going to stay the same, but we're actually going to move it from the numerator to the denominator or the denominator to the numerator. So the value of the base doesn't change, we just move it. So anytime you have a negative exponent, that's what you're going to do. As you can see, here's our y, and it has a negative exponent. Okay, here's our y with the negative exponent. So what we're going to do is we're going to move our base. Right now, looking at this problem, I would say that y is located in the numerator. So when I move the base of y, it's actually going to move down to the denominator. And the only thing that that, ha that affects or the only thing that is affected by that, it's not the base itself, but it's the sign of the exponent. So what happens is the exponent, the sign will change. Okay. The coefficients will actually remain in the same place. So the only thing that you're going to move is the variable or the term that has a negative exponent. So here, this all move, the y moves. The 5x, right now, 5 has a positive exponent of 1, and x has a positive exponent of 1. So we keep those there. If we were to move those, then the exponents for those two things would change. So if we were to take this 5 and move it down here, it would be 5 to the negative 1 power. So we only move the parts of the expression that have a negative exponent. So looking at another example, uh, we have 5 to the negative 2 power. The denominator is 1. So we would take our base and we'll move it down to the denominator. The base stays the same, but we change the sign of the exponent. To hold our place value, what we actually need to do is put a 1 up here. Now one thing that you'll hear in my classroom is that any time that we can uh, simplify a numeric expression, we need to do that. So this would not be my answer. I would actually need to square that 25, or square that 5. So my answer would be 1 over 25. Now let's see if we can't look at the other uh, way that we simplify negative exponents. And this rule happens uh, basically when the negative exponent applies to all of the expression. So in the last example, the negative exponent only applied to part. And what we did is we took that base and we moved it from the numerator to denominator or vice versa, and it changed the sign of the exponent. Well, in this case, our negative applies to the whole thing. So what we're going to do is um, the base will stay the same, but we're going to take the reciprocal of it. Okay, Reciprocal is a good math word. Hopefully you remember what it means. But to take the reciprocal of something means that you... Uh, the math is you divide it into one, but a lot of times you guys have learned that you just flip it. So the reciprocal of this base, as you can see our negative exponent applies to the whole thing. We just flip it upside down. So 3y squared over 2x. Now what happens to that is actually change the sign of the exponent. So what was a negative 3 will now become a positive 3. And now to simplify this, what we're actually going to do is we will cube this. So we'll get 3y squared over 2x. 3y squared over 2x. And 3y squared over 2x. And then when you multiply all those things together, hopefully you'll see you'll get, you're going to multiply your numerators together. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Multiplying like bases so the base stays the same, we add the exponents together to give us 6. And then 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And then x times x times x, you add your exponents, x to the third. So that's the simplified form for this.